Hello lovelies and welcome to Better Future Production. I'm super ecstatic to welcome you to the second episode of the Personality Program. And yes, of course, I'm your favorite host, Miss Hadi Duke. And today we have a very interesting guest in our studio who is no other than Fatumata Tumanjai, commonly known as Tuma. Honorable, you are welcome to the platform. Thank you very much for having me, Hadi. You're welcome. Honorable C is the current MP of Banji South constituency. Honorable is the member of the National Assembly of the Gambia and also represented the Gambia as a member of parliament at the Economic Committee of West African State in South ECOWAS. Honorable is a bachelor degree holder in politics and international relations and a postgraduate diploma in law and MBA. Honorable is, uh, Honorable is the founder of Yai Dentin and yes, of course, she is married with Three kids, Honorable works to help to increase the number of women in decision making. As we are heading to the next parliamentary election, which is expected to be held by April 2022, so today in our studio, we will be dealing with facts regarding the next parliamentary election. You all join us as I engage you. So Honorable, how do you see yourself? as a female politician because when it comes to the political arena in the Gambia, women taking part in politics is limited. Um, thank you very much for having me Hadi. Um, women taking part in politics, I wouldn't say it's limited. Mm -hmm. because if you see every man that is elected must have been pushed by a woman. But we say that women taking leadership at the top is limited. I see myself as a politician. I don't classify myself as a female politician because I believe that whatever a man can do, if a woman cannot do better, they can do as well. So we need to see more women at the top rather than just as cheerleaders. And I hope that in this April, in this coming April elections, we will see more women, especially at the National Assembly level, not only at National Assembly level, but as mayors, chairpersons, as well as councillors. Oh, okay, Honorable. That's, that's, I think that's understandable. Okay, Honorable, we would like to know what's the problem between you and PPP. And yes, of course, that's the People's Progress Party. Um, I don't think there's a problem between myself and the PPP. Okay. We had a Congress, and the Congress had an issue. And that is one of the challenges. And we all heard what the court judgment, the interim judgment, it says that we must maintain the status quo. That is the reason I am still an executive member of the party and the person that was supposedly, I say supposedly, because that is why I'm challenging it, because I believe that the Congress was fraudulent. So I said supposedly the party leader. But we are still waiting for the judgment. Hopefully, by April 2022, we would have had a decision. We all know that the court system is just, and whatever decision is taken by the courts will be the right decision, and the party must abide by it. Okay, because you always have this, uh, this belief that you can take PPP to another level. But recently, we have not been say, seeing you engaging in any of PPP activities. That's why most of these people thinking like, uh, like the rumors that is circulating in all the social media platform that Honorable is being dismissed from the party, uh, from the party, and that's PPP, of course. Yeah, I was supposedly expelled, mm -hmm. but expulsion must take a process, and I think that is why the court said that expulsion was not in order and I should also not claim to be the party leader. That is why I am quiet regarding the party because I respect the rule of law. As a, as a lawmaker, I must respect the laws of the country. We make the laws, so I must not be seen to break those laws that I make. So that is the reason I am waiting for the court's decision before I can even declare what position I will run under in this coming parliamentary election. But we rest assured, I will maintain my seat, I will go back to my parliament, and I will continue with, and I will continue representing the people the best I could. Because you've seen my contribution in the last five years. And Alhamdulillah, 
if it's been exceptionally good. Mm. I won't say I was the best at the parliament, but I would say I, if people are counting, I will be amongst the best. Okay. Then, uh, but the problem is that why is PPP not exposed like other political parties, such as the United Democratic Party, the National People's Party? Is it that you guys are not united in order to achieve your common goal? It's not a matter of being united or not being united. We all know that the PPP was banned from active politics for 17 years. And once you break someone's wings, mm -hmm. it will be difficult to bring that back and mend. And that was the purpose why I wanted to take the party, because I have proven myself. I have proven myself in the first five years, and exceptionally, I would say, I have passed with flying scholars. Okay, so what do you have to say about uh, most of this? We have recently, we have been seeing a lot of PPP members cross competing to all the political parties, such as NPP. That is normal, that is natural. We've not only seen PPP members crossing. Mm -hmm. We've seen other parties crossing, and I don't think I have seen any PPP crossing. What I have seen mm -hmm. is PPP claiming that they are working with NPP, because you cannot dis mention any PPP that had crossed to any other party, and that is a fact. So do you think we should allow politics to divide us? Definitely not. Gambia is too small to mm -hmm. allow politics to divide us. Somebody like me, I'm a melting pot. I can't, allow, I can't allow anybody to divide me. I am Fula, my mom is half Mandinka, my kids are Sarahule. So for me, my mother-in-law is half Jola, so I'm a melting pot. And we mustn't allow tribe to divide us. We must identify our uniqueness, which is our Gambianness. Mm -hmm. We are Gambians first and foremost. We are, as a Wabanyu, I would say. Yeah. We are Wabanyu, we are Gambians, so we should embrace that. I remember growing up, in Bajul in the, I was born in 1970, I remember growing up in Bajul in the 70s, in the 80s, and in the 2000s now. Mm. And what, I mean, I grew up in a community that embraced each other, in a community where I can go to anybody's house and feel safe. And I think that is what we need to nurture, that is what we need to protect and safeguard the importance of our Gambianness. Yeah, honorable, because politics come and go, even political parties, they come and go. But the Gambia will forever stay. <laughs> exactly. So I think if all politicians have Gambia at heart, they will all come together to work for the development of the country. And, uh, and if you follow my contributions in Parliament, mm -hmm. I'm not somebody that is partisan. Yeah. I don't. I believe in my principles, and whoever comes with the same set of ideals, with the same set of principles, mm -hmm. I will. Because you can even tell that some people will say, sometimes you vote this side, sometimes you vote that side. Yeah. It's not based on whoever brings anything. It's based on my principles. I am equitable, I am fair, and I am just. And I am sincere in what I do. I did not come to politics to, um, for myself. I decided to come to politics so that I can share the experience that I have, so I can see young girls, see another woman, being up there because my friend last week told me that you cannot believe in something that you don't know you cannot emulate something that you've not seen so i see myself as that role model for gambian girls somebody like you yeah somebody like i mean you know so that they can see they can believe that it is possible yeah because what they believe is that it's a gentleman's club yes it is a gentleman's club but we can break that barrier break that glass ceiling we've seen it and i think it's possible Okay, Honeyobu, uh, what's the problem between you and Keba, Jan? There is no problem at all. It is not Tuma or Keba. Okay. It was a position that we were fighting for, not fighting for, that we are contesting for. And they all knew that I was going to win that. And I guess being a female made it a double, jeop uh, a double jeopardy. Mm -hmm. Because being a female, a man would not want to see me. And everybody knows that I am more qualified, I have been tested, mm -hmm. I ran for elections, and if any other person would come and say that Keba ran for elections, I would doubt that because I would, as I think and I know that he was once at the, at the um, city council of BCC, I mean, I am sorry, KFC. Yeah. It was then, I think, Combo something, but it was never through an election, it was an interim appointed by the former PPP 
for a few months and then he was made the chair okay. there and then he became the first mayor I think of KMC but it was not through an election. I tested the waters. I went through an election and we rest assured it wasn't the PPP that made me win my elections. Okay. It was people from Banjul. Okay. It was on the team Tahawal Banjul. Okay. And then I chose the PPP because I was <coughs> born and bred under the PPP. My father was a very influential person at the PPP. And whoever, many of those people now claiming to be PPP big men were mostly supported by him. I'm not blowing my trumpets, but I'm trying to follow what I know. And what you know, if it's good, then you try to make it better. Okay, does that mean, uh, okay, uh, does Kebajal has this final saying when it comes to PPP? Because during an interview with Kilfato, Kebajal mentioned like uh, and, uh, PPP, they would not take part in the presidential election, and that is what uh, and that is what happened exactly. And during an interview with Kilfato, Kebajal did mention like, he was so disappointed with your attitude and even Mohamed Ndaw, who is the MP of Bangi Centre, has addressed to all what he was saying. Yeah, Mohamed Ndaw said that I am the problem of the party, party? because I am exactly. the one that speaks at the parliament. And what I do in parliament for, is it not to speak? Because, <laughs> I mean, for me, whatever I say at the parliament yeah. is, I mean, is applauded. I defend the state. I mean, I protect my constituency. I bring in issues of national interest okay. and I believe that is what is very important in the National Assembly. I do not go there. I did not go there to warm a seat. Okay. I'm not saying but then compared to Mohammed now, if I am given ten, I think he will be given point two. <laughs> yeah, and I think only Banjul uh, South and Banjul Center they can attest to that because they are the only people that knows what you guys are contributing towards the development on your of your constituency. Constituency, yeah. So honorable, uh, there is this rumors that is uh, circulating in all social media platform that PP, uh, PPP members dismiss you from the party. But I just said that I said I was expelled from the party. He, I was expelled. They said from the party, but then the court said that. It was not right. So I am still an executive member of the executive. I respect the decision of the, the courts. Okay. But do they respect the decision of the court? I am still not invited in executive meetings. But I will wait for the court judgment because I am PPP. And nobody, the people that expelled me from PPP mm -hmm. were not elected by the people under the PPP. So I claim I'm a legal PPP. Okay. But like the court said, I will wait for the court judgment. Okay, you still clearly claiming you are still a member of PPP. I am an executive member executive, of Executive ex yes. Executive member of the PPP. So why is that the PPP members deny you from having access to the final voters list? Because I think you, as an executive member, you still have the same right with them. And you can do whatever you want to do based on the position you hold there. I would not say they denied me. I wrote a letter requesting for it. They are yet to respond. So it's either a no or a yes. Yes. And I know that they were busy supporting the MPP during the parliament I mean, during the presidential elections. So I'm, I was thinking that probably there was nobody at the office. I do not assume. I give everybody the benefit of the doubt because I would expect people to give me the benefit of the doubt as well. So okay. to say that they denied to give it to me, that I would be lying because I wrote a letter, they are yet to respond. Okay, okay, no, no. I think that's <laughs> loud and clear. <Claire. laughs> and my, I know my viewers, they must be watching, and they were all eager to uh, to hear the, uh, the details from you. Okay, and I, and I also know that your viewers would know that I am 100% PPP and I stand to defend it. That's why, if you all see, I was neutral during the yeah, we, go, we don't, don't worry, uh, because for me, yeah, I'm coming to that. I'm on that. No, no, I have to make that clear, okay, because the court we have a legal process. If you have a legal process, yeah. I am a PPP, I don't have a candidate. So I believe that I should stay out and do whatever okay, I Okay, honey. Okay, yeah. I have, a, I have my voters card. I voted, of course. Of course, I know. Okay, viewers, as we are heading to the next parliamentary election, which is expected to be held by April 2022, so, honey, if you are going to contest for the next parliamentary election, which political party are you going to represent? Of course, I am a PPP. So I think there's no doubt asking which political party. Do you think they will give you the ma mandate to go ahead? Eh? For the party. If you have a seat uh -huh. and you don't give the person, the, the incumbent, mm -hmm. then it means that you don't want the seat. And so I am PPP. 
Okay, so and of course I'm going to contest for my seat. Like I said again, I did I won under the PPP umbrella. Of course. But my campaign was not PPP focused. Okay. You were part of my campaign. You all were. You gave me that seat. Yeah. That's why I'm answerable to buy yourself. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, honorable. So what's your agenda for the what's your agenda? My agenda. Mm -hmm. Um you or you can recall that in April I won my elections. In July I established the identity, okay. which is an organization that supports young girls who would have otherwise dropped out of school. I work with women, vulnerable people. I support market women. I make sure that girls do not drop out of school. And um, that is my agenda, to make sure that once I step out, an other girl will step in. And yeah. how do I do that? by mentor, mentoring them. I have a group of young girls mm -hmm. that I mentor. Be rest assured, I'm not leaving the boys behind because okay. I even sponsor some men so that it will balance because we don't want to be ahead. We don't want to be left behind, but it we also want it to balance. Gender balance. Yes. <laughs> I have some students <laughs> at MDI, yeah. at the university, at the Presentation Girls Vocational Center. Yeah. And the only promise that I failed in my campaign mm -hmm. was to establish a library which was meant to be opened in March but due to COVID mm -hmm. it was halted so hopefully that would be a promise that I would love to keep. Well, okay. Because if, uh, the Yai Denton project, uh, it is a project whereby, you know, that's me, it seems like you're empowering girls because all the girls that are all out there that have all the qualities and qualifications, but maybe because of financial support, they could pursue their education. I think when they, uh, they can uh, request that for the form and then fill and then form their first check and sponsor them. That is correct. Yeah, they, they consult. Am I correct? Yes they, or no? They consult people on the ground because, of course, as a political person, mm -hmm. I don't want to be seen. I want to be behind the scene. Okay. So I have three wards in my constituency. And each ward, I have a focal person, a focal point. Mm -hmm. So they will contact people. They will contact them. Or and sometimes the schools will contact me, like the Presentation Girls Vocational Center. They will contact me that there's somebody who's struggling with the fees. And I will ask them whether they are part of my constituency. And if it is confirmed, mm -hmm then I will take it up and make sure that they will not drop out. They will continue. And so far, so good. Mm -hmm. I've heard rumors that I cherry pick. Yeah. I don't even know the people that I I was even to. about to ask I you was, that. I don't, I'm, I'm, <laughs> part, because I'm part of the community, but yeah. I don't even know people that I sponsor. For example, the, my students at the vocational center, it was during the, the graduation ceremony yeah, that when I met them, mm -hmm. actually, because I tried to stay at the back because when you do good it's not for political reasons i think doing good is in my dna i was brought up to share the privileges that i have i was brought up to be caring and to share and i think that's in my dna mm -hmm. so it's not that i know them it's not that i expect anything from them the only reward i want yeah. is to see them succeed that's that's all i want to see Okay, honey. Uh, <laughs> and I think those girls she sponsored, they must be very grateful because if you educate a girl, of course you educate the whole nation. Now, that's uh, lead us to the next question. Honey, there is this rumors that is circulating in all social media platforms that you have course carpeted to the United Democratic Party. That's also, I also saw it at the, at the media. But so you, somebody, you also somebody, saw it. Somebody, <laughs> if, somebody, if somebody knows me, they would know that mm -hmm. I don't borrow anybody's tongue. Yeah. I always speak for myself. I have my social media platform. Mm -hmm. I have my tumor for buying yourself okay. space. So if I were to do anything. And I wouldn't have taken that trouble going to the courts if I wanted to cross carpet. Mm -hmm. And in 2017, I chose the PPP. So I think if I should cross carpet, I would rather form my own party than be an opportunist. I am not an opportunist. <laughs> okay, Honorable. Uh, so, uh, do you think you will be given a second chance for the next parliamentary election by your people? And, of your, and yes, of course, that's by your sad constituency. Definitely, yes. 
because I've not seen any MP mm -hmm. that has done what I have done, and my people have attested to that. My salary has been towards Yaidentin. Yaidentin is solely sponsored by me, 100%, because I said I will do it for the first five years, and if it's a success, then I will start looking for resources. But so far, so good. And I believe that my constituency would want my work to continue supporting young girls because it is their sons and daughters that I'm supporting. I only have three children. But now I have a whole lot of family yeah. in Bahia South. They <laughs> all call me mommy. And that is so reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I don't know. Let's go. okay, since you came in power, uh, what did you contribute towards the development of Banyasad constituency? Uh, Banyasad constituency, we all recall in, um, was it in March 2017, when His Excellency, the President, I will also take this opportunity to congratulate him and also to tell him, to advise him not to disappoint the people that voted for him and to make us regret not supporting him during the elections because we all have reasons why. But if he does well in the next five years, obviously what will stop us. So my advice to him is to make sure he doesn't disappoint people that voted him. 58% is not 8%. It yeah. is a lot. And it is an absolute majority. But what I have done for Banjul, when he stated, when he made that declaration that he was going to do the Banjul South, the Banjul roads, mm -hmm. I stood at the um, uh, July 22nd, and I reminded him. When he also came to the parliament, I reminded him. Mm -hmm. And parliament approves payments. And I think the president executes. We approve. Mm -hmm. And if we had not pushed, it wouldn't have happened. We thank him for doing it because it is his tenure. But Banyu South should also thank me because I also oversee. They all saw me going around with Harlem when he was yeah. doing the jobs. And I would say that it saved me a lot because we all knew how devastating the conditions of Banjul were. Mm -hmm. When it rains, I would be called. Even if it doesn't rain, I would be called because the sewage would have problems. Okay. And every trip, I would pay minimum $5,000 for it to be drained. And that the government has saved me. Mm -hmm. And I would say thank you for that. But also, if that hadn't happened, I would have continued. It would have drained my resources, but I would still have continued doing it. And those are the things that we've done for Banjo. Recently, uh -huh. the St. Mary's Primary School had an issue. They were supposed to close the school, move the children to um, JC. I Hi. was at the meeting. What we did, they wrote petition. Gambia is not a country where they respect petition. They would have done petition. Uh -huh. So because I'm their representative, they sent me to the ministry. I went with the permanent secretary to the school. We, we went round, observed the environment, mm -hmm. and I sent a letter proposing to open a gate at the back to secure the kids from the trucks. Yeah. And thankfully, the ministry have approved a bay temporary, but we will still continue the conversation. Yeah. That is representation. Mm -hmm. When your people have issues, you stand up for them yeah. and you make sure the best option is taken. Yeah, because you are representing your people yeah. and I guess you, exactly. you have to represent them. It's As the saying goes, to whom much is given, much is expected. So by us, when they have issues, stand in firm for them. That is what they are expecting from you. I think that's the main reason why they voted for you. Because exactly. they have the trust in you and they think like uh, you will be suitable for this position. That's where you were given this position. So let's see what happens uh, in the next parliament elections. <laughs> I know April will be more fun because according to my own perspective, the parliamentary election, the local government election, and yes, of course, the mayor election will be more fun than the presidential election. <laughs> okay, honorable. Because I guess um, people see parliamentary work as um, an easy task. They will say we don't see our MPs, but we represent them at the parliament. Mm -hmm. And if anything should happen, it's not my job to be given, to be paying, to be doing things. But I take it upon me because I believe that we don't have a social security system. Yeah. 
we don't have a welfare system that we support. And I believe that is the reason why I also opted to run for elections, to see that at least some of those things are catered for. And I think Daniel South, I'm thankful and grateful to them for having given me the opportunity. And I believe that they would want us to continue that job because so far, so good. We are going to continue. We have students at the university, which we must continue. And we need more on board. It will be very pleasing to go to their graduation at the university, at NDI, to see them get jobs. And to see a girl that I mentored someday sworn in at the National Assembly, I think that is the reward that I want. Not monetary, not position, that is what I want to see and it will happen. Okay, honeyhoo. <laughs> <laughs> so when are you going to start your campaign for the parliament for election? Um, we will start after the president's inauguration. He won an election. He deserves the space to celebrate his victory. So immediately after the inauguration, we will kickstart our campaign. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, Honorable. So what uh, message will you like to send to your opponent? Of course, that's Usman Wada, who is endorsed by the National People's Party. And yes, of course, the party is lead, uh, led by the president of the nation, uh, President Adam Abago. I think as a journalist also, Hadi, you should um, go and find your facts because I don't think they anybody has endorsed the party has not endorsed anybody yet because we are not of course it that. was endorsed i was there ah, okay. all my questions here is based on facts ah, okay usman wada is endorsed to run for the parliamentary okay, election then i wish him well but i'm telling him the rest assured that i am going to take back my seat because i am going to continue the work that i've done i contested against five men and i won them outright and i'm going to retain maintain that seat he's a brother okay he's my he's not only my brother He's also married to my niece. Uh -huh. So it's a family affair. It's a family matter exactly. then. And family comes first. Know, no, no. Politics <laughs> is politics. What is <laughs> We contest, we contest. But at the end of the day, we go out, we shake hands. Okay. It's the because one. for the next, uh, for the parliamentary election, we know you are the one, you know, occupying that position. But Oswada is the one that is endorsed by NPP. And it's only uh, uh, Oswada that's so up for now. Maybe we'll be having many of them coming on the way. I think what the way you are saying it is as if it's a party. People vote. Exactly. This is what I was vote for principle. This is what I was even about. Being endorsed by um, a ruling party is nothing. Exactly. I was approached by the ruling party in 2017, mm -hmm. but based on my principles, I went for a party that was smaller, weaker, not even structured. And I see what. So it's your people that give you the seat. It's not the party. So let us have that in mind that some people would go hiding behind political parties like for seats. Mm -hmm. And I'm not that type of person. Because for me, I am ready for the work. Mm -hmm. Not to hide behind shadows. That's not to my eye. If you know me, if you followed me for the past five years, you would know that I'm not somebody to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. I go out there, I'm a go-getter, okay. I go for what I want. It would have been easier for me if I had just declared my support for the incumbent and come out because I want to maintain my seat. Exactly. But I know I can maintain my seat with the work that I do. I have proven myself and I think that is what is going to get me my seat back, not deception, not deceit, exactly. because that is not me. Yeah, Honil, this is what I was even trying to say. When it's come to the parliamentary election, local government or mayor election, the party you are representing, it does not matter. Because I think like people now, we pass that level, you know, where politicians can use us, you know, at the end of the day, nothing. Because they, you are already in that position. Your people know what you are capable of doing. You understand? Like for me, I think like uh, political parties, it doesn't matter. But it, uh, it's left to the person representing that party. Yeah. 
like just what you were just trying to say. One should, once you enter the National Assembly, you should... Be because, you, okay, here, for like example, you are uh, representing PPP. You understand? But if even if those NPP members, they know too much, it's working immensely towards the development of Bangi South constituent. What is stopping them from voting for you? It doesn't matter the, uh, the party you belong. I think if the party is suitable for their job, I think you are. I think you are getting the point. And also, yeah, this is what I was saying. Also, we don't want a one-party state. We don't want a parliament. Exactly. That will just sit there at the beck and call of the executive. We want a parliament that will respond to the needs of the people. A party, a parliament that would know if the president is doing right uh -huh. and say it support him in doing right yeah and if he's doing wrong point it out and make sure that he is put back in order that is the parliament that we are looking forward to mm -hmm. if we follow ghana parliament last month they rejected their budget because it did not reflect the needs of the people the government took it back brought it back adjusted it and they approved it it is you that elected me so I should look at you and like, I would not want to see more women die during childbirth. I would vote for an increase in health votes than to get me a car. I would vote to increase in education than to increase my salary. So why would you not vote for me? That is helping the government. Because if the hospitals are good, it is the government that is doing well. If you give me a car, I'll drive it home. And nobody's going to use it. Mm -hmm. So what's the point? I think Gambia should be beyond saying that this is the president, this is the government, so they must be in parliament. Otherwise, the Jews will stay on their path. And you people will die of hunger, of poverty. I think that is what we need. We need to have checks and balances. Yeah. And that is what parliament is for. Okay, honorable. <laughs> okay, honorable. So, what are the obstacles you encounter as a politician? So far, the only obstacles I have is being one of few female MPs. Because we've all seen I have a private member bill to increase women representation in the country, but it's been delayed. And the reason we waited until this time to bring it was because we're expecting it in the new constitution. But hopefully in January we'll present it. That is the only obstacle. Because if we go back to parliament and have only three elected female, that would be a disaster. I would want to see my daughters mm -hmm. in parliament. And in that case, it would reflect economically, socially, in every way. Because a woman MP would want to see more in social services. The woman MPs would want to see more in salary increment. Yeah. We want to see more invested in health, in education, because we are mothers. We know how it will affect the country. That is the only obstacle. But apart from that. Okay. <laughs> then Honorable is a strong lady of woman of <laughs> because to handle political affairs is never easy. <laughs> Like I said again, we need to be strong yeah. so that the young girls would come into the arena. And the more we are, the stronger we will be. Yeah. So I want to see girls come in. And we never quit. And, and I told you, never. my seat yeah. will not be occupied again by a male. The rest of the show, because I am grooming young girls to take over. Of course. <laughs> if I should take this seat, if I would go in Parliament, and that would be my last. Because this coming, this coming, if I win, it will be my last. I'm 51. By that time, I'll be 56. Okay. So, why 56? Come on. I would have a young girl to come and take my seat. And I will nurture them, make sure that there's another to my guy at the parliament. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I am home. <laughs> okay, hello. But how many times did you help a meeting in your constituency? Because I'm um, calling. I'm calling. Okay. <laughs> you see, her name is so hard by now. <laughs> okay, anyways, I love the confidence and everything, the attitude and everything. So how many times did you have a meeting in your constituency? Because according to the resident of the constituency, mm -hmm. you have never had a meeting to engage the masses. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
when they called me for a meeting, because um, Gambian politics, MPs, we don't have community development funds. Anything you do is at your expense. So before you convene people, why don't you support them? You know their problems. Convening people at whose expense? At their expense? At my expense? Bible South is a constituency mm -hmm. where people live all over. If you say you are going to make, have a meeting in Banjo, mm -hmm. you must bring in people. And at, who, at whose cost? I engage people indirectly through my focal people in Banjo. In all the words, if you want to say anything to me, you know where to go. In Habdai, in Town, in Portuguese town, and I'm always entertaining them. Can you them. mention their names? I can't. Oh, okay. But if you go to Afdai, if you call me mm -hmm. and tell me, I will say, call this person. Okay. And they, and they will deal with you. Mm -hmm. That is how I am always engaged with my people. That's how you operate. That's how I operate. And if they want to meet, then we meet at the National Assembly. That is why we are fighting to have offices at the National Assembly. In other countries, mm -hmm. the state gives you money to run your community affairs and you retire it. But thank God. We have fought for that. And hopefully the next parliament would enjoy that. They will have offices, they will have staff, and that would empower their constituencies. And we, as a member of the authority of the National Assembly, we made that happen. I'm proud to say that I am a member of the authority, which is equivalent to the board of the National Assembly. Okay, but you are not uh, w uh, working with particular individuals that are from Bangisa, because yeah, no. because uh, according uh, like to the, uh, I think there will be a list that will be selected by the chairman of the constituency, and it has to be 23 people in number that the MP of a particular constituency have to work with. You know, you are the MP of that. I am an MP of the constituency. Yeah. When you work based on party, yeah, you have a party committee, okay. but for me. I am a Banjul South. I work with all three councillors of the world. Yeah. I work with their committees because I see the interest of Banjo. Mm -hmm. I will not say Afdai has a PPP MP, so I will work with him. I work with all three councillors. So their, their, their committees, I also see them as my committee because their issues are my issues. Yeah. They have their issues. I work on their issues. If it needs to be taken to Parliament, I take it because I represent them. I think that is inclusive leadership, which is what we should promote, rather than being exclusive. If I say I work with only PPP committees, if a UDP person or an NPP person needs something, they will shy away. Yeah, that's why it's good. They will not come. You have to be so neutral. for me, I'm the people's MP. Uh -huh. I'm approachable, I'm reachable. And I am there to make sure that their pains are eased, irrespective of which party you are. I represent them. Some of the people that I pay for are from other parties. It doesn't bother me. They are from my community. Because I want to enrich, empower people from my community. And that's leadership. Okay, hello. So how do you take decision? Is it that you consult people or you take your own personal no. decision? If you follow me on social media, yeah. every time we have sitting, we have five questions per sitting. Sometimes they come, sometimes they fall on the next sitting. Okay. I always throw it out and it's the first five that come. If you followed me mm -hmm. some time back, the Minister of Fishery is from my party. Okay. I had heated questions for him. If it was to come from me, I wouldn't have asked a question. But it came from the community. They were concerned about fisheries. They gave me the question. I had no option but to ask. Questions cannot be my question. My home is my home. My constituency is our constituency. Of course, ours. So the question must come, from, exactly, must come from them, <laughs> not from me. So I must consult them and they give me, and if you follow my social media, if you follow me, you will see that I'm like so and so, I need questions, you send them, and if you don't see me answer, ask questions, you know that they've not sent questions. Then during adjournment debate, I'll come with issues concerning banjo.
At times, I interfere in things I shouldn't interfere. Okay. Like, sometimes, they said they built, someone was building a store, and the neighbor's fence, they broke the neighbor's fence. Mm -hmm. They called me, I had to intervene. And those things are cancel matters. Exactly. But I must, if they trust you to put you there, you go to the council and tell them. If the council cannot, you go to the businessman and tell him. I had to threaten. I was bluffing, pretending that I had powers which I did not have. <laughs> but I had to pretend. I'm like, if you don't do that fence within 48 hours, I will stop your construction. Can I do that? Of course not. <laughs> but then it was repaired. You know, sometimes your voice is more powerful than you think. And that is what we should do. We mustn't abuse it and we mustn't let people be carried away or get us carried away that we are above them. Because without you people, we are nobody. We should represent you. So what, are, so what do you have to uh, tell to the individuals that think like you normally use your position as an advantage towards them? Oh, do I do that? I don't think I do. I don't even have any advantage. So I don't use my position for anything. My official position and my personal position are completely separate. I mean, if I'm going on holiday, I go, I don't use the VIP lounge, I use my yeah, personal no passport, I use the bus. If I'm going on official duty, I use the VIP car, I use the VIP lounge. Because that's, that is how I am. So, <laughs> if I'm walking like today, I see this yeah, as part of, like today, no, today, I came with my pickup. Yeah. Because I believe this is part of my work. Yeah. But when I go on my private office, of my private business, I use my own personal car. When I go to work, because I'm coming from Banjul, mm -hmm. I was on the pickup. I am not a pickup person. But then it's my official car. So when I go on official duties, I use it. When I go after my own business, I use my car. <laughs> so. No, it's okay. That's fine. So how will your enemies describe you? I don't have enemies. I don't, because enemies, hatred is not part of my vocabulary. If I don't know you, probably I don't know you, but I believe that we are all human. And as a Muslim, mm -hmm. I don't believe in enemies. We can compete healthily against for a position, which I know it will happen. Mm -hmm. But then your actions should speak rather than your words. What have I done for my constituency? If I see somebody that can do this work better, I will support them to do, but so far I have not seen. Yeah, because I believe like <laughs> after the election campaign and you know, everything, we as politicians, you all have to put your political defense and work aside together and work towards the development of the country. That, because that is what we need. We have a lot of, you know, lot of people out there that have all the qualifications, mm -hmm. qualities, but they, but they, they, they don't have a job. Because I have a focus. It's on empowering girls and women, exactly. vulnerable people. So you come and say what your purpose is rather than hiding behind a political party. You know, you know, sometimes <laughs> people may be having all the qualifications and qualities, but they don't have people that will motivate them, to ins uh, inspire them, for them to achieve their key objective. You know, but some, that's why sometimes you, it's good when you have people, you know, to motivate you, you understand, to inspire you. You understand? Because each and every one of us has a particular goal. We all have our own target. You understand? But no, sometimes we face a lot of challenges, obstacles on the way. That's why it's good to be strong sometimes. Because life itself is not easy, but through hard work and determination, you can achieve whatever you achieve. That's my exactly. philosophy. That's what I believe yeah. in. And I see myself as that person that young girls should look up to and say it's possible. Mm -hmm. Because we, we are doing it. Mm -hmm. They've seen us doing it the right way. And I believe that when you do politics, do politics with integrity, sincerely, with genuity, not politics of want, politics for position. Because with what I'm doing, it's not extravagant. I put in what I can. And if somebody comes, ask me to do something, mm -hmm. if I can't do it, I will tell you I can't. Mm -hmm. Because I have to budget for things that I do. It's not that money is sitting in a well, where you can just put a bucket and draw. So we plan, we plan short, medium, and long term. We plan for a month, 
three months, six months. So if something comes up, obviously there must be something for contingency. There are circumstances where you cannot say no. If somebody is sick and needs to go to the hospital, that you cannot plan. You have to help. If somebody is being sent out of school because their parent is sick, that school fees you must pay. However, so that's why I have um, an overdraft facility at the bank for contingencies because there are certain things that I must do as a mother, not only not as a politician, but as a mother, as a human being. I think we are human beings first and foremost before we are politicians. That's the most important thing. Okay, Colonel, the most strange thing is that <laughs> during the presidential election, we did not see you endorsing any political party. The question is, why do you take the decision to resolve yourself during the presidential election? But I said that my party, my matter is at the court. Mm -hmm. And I am contesting the leadership of the party. And I believe from my complaint, I said that people want PPP to die. And if I should leave my party, which is in crisis, yeah. to go and use all my resources, presidential election, elections are cycle. Mm -hmm. You have the presidential, you have the parliamentary, and you have the local election. Yeah. Mine is the parliamentary election. Yeah. So let me focus on the parliamentary election. Because like I said again, Banjul South, yeah. they voted for me not on party basis. Exactly. They voted for the person. Mm -hmm. I do not want to offend anybody. Exactly. I wanted them. People called me asking me, who do I vote for? I said, no, just vote for, vote with your conscience. Exactly. I do not want to guide anybody. Mm -hmm. Because I, my party did not have a candidate. So why should I be a hypocrite to tell you vote for so-and-so and not for so-and-so? If PPP had a candidate, even if I knew we were going to lose, I would have appealed for you to vote for my party. But we did not. That was why I just had to... I'm one person with one vote. Even though I, can, I could have influenced many votes, yeah. but I decided to be honorable. <laughs> Man would have passed in it. Yeah, sometimes it's good to reserve yourself. Well. <laughs> because, like, uh, you do not endorse any political party. Mm -hmm. But during an interview with Kilpatu, Keva Jalo did mention, like, PPP members will be endorsing President Adam mm -hmm. Yeah, That's what he said. Yeah. But as I said, PPP is not one person. Mm -hmm. PPP is an entity. There's an executive. If, an ex if I'm a, as a member of the executive, I did not attend any executive party that made that decision. So I cannot say anything about that. If we were at an executive meeting and the decision was made, I would have had no option but to respect that decision and follow them. But I wasn't part of that and I'm not aware of any executive. It was one person that said it. No. So Okay. <laughs> So what, so what is your recent analysis uh, of the recent presidential election? I think, I mean, my constituency, mm -hmm. even a blind person would have seen President Adam Abaro winning because he's done well in Banjul. And also, I did not analyze it because I was not really a part of the elections. Yeah. And if you see, mm -hmm. most of the, um, the campaign period, I had a sick child yeah. who was in hospital mm -hmm. most of the time. For the past, I mean, for three months, I was taking care of her, so I wasn't. And I came back, went to work, then I went to my parliamentary sessions at the ECOWAS. I purposely chose not to interfere since I did not have a candidate and since most importantly my matter was at my matter is still at the courts. I'm trying to rebuild my party if the opportunity is given to me. It's not only a belief, it's something that I know I can do. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's so, something I know I can do. Okay. So what do you have to say about UDP? Petition regarding the, court, the it's, December 4th. It's not my party. 
So it's their decision. That's all I can say. I can't interfere in someone else's house. It's hypocritical. Okay. You've seen I've never interfered. I've never even made a comment. And I believe I shouldn't. It's their discretion. And they have a right to do any petition. Also, the president also has a right to go and defend himself. I think, but it is good for the laws of this country that at least it shows democracy. It shows that we are progressing. Because like six years ago, who dared to even challenge dictatorship in this country? Nobody. I'm just hoping that we will not walk again towards dictatorship because a one-party state will eventually lead us to dictatorship. So this parliamentary election is very important that we have a rainbow parliament with as many parties as possible. Diversity. Okay, uh, Honorable. <laughs> During the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we see like, because even you post on your social media page, like, leadership is all about leading by, uh, by example. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But you were even encouraging people, you know, to go out with, in their life numbers to take the COVID-19 vaccine. Mm -hmm. But then, on the, other, uh, on the other hand, there is also this tumor that was circulating in the social media. You said like your mom will never be quarantined. Was that the case? I don't know. I was not okay, there. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. That's water under the bridge now. We all know that they had to move them. I said they should be moved because the facility was not used for two years. It's not habitable. If I did not want my mom to go on quarantine, I had means to pick her from the airport. But like I said, I'm a liberal person, I'm democratic, I want everybody to do the right thing. Yeah. I allowed her to go, but then the facility was inhabitable, so I asked them to move them. They wanted to move my mother alone. I said, no, she's not the only one there. My mom is sick, she's 72. Okay. But I would still want her to do the right thing. But you cannot move my mom and my daughter and leave the others there. So I said, no, but they moved them eventually. I was arrested, but nothing came out of it because I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> okay, it was so just so intimidating me. Okay. Because they know that when I want something, I go for it. And I make it known mm -hmm. that this is the right thing to be done. It must be done, irrespective of who it is. For me, the MD is as good as the janitor. The president is as good as the, as the maid that cooks his meal, because we are all human. At the end of the day, if we die, we are all going to leave all this material here. No, you will not go with a dime. They won't even call your name. Yeah. So, at the end of the day, it's a matter of principle. So, we have all of them we are moved together. They are all moved to And we are like the other step by the police. No, no, it was when I dropped. It was a long story. So, I think that's it water under the bridge. Somewhere. Yeah, I think that's water under the bridge. It was sorted and they apologized because they knew that what they said was wrong. I was arrested in my car. I went to drop them some food. How can you do something in your own car? I think we all should be very careful about certain messages that normally circulate in the social media. Mm -hmm. like, uh, the thing, uh, like, like the saying goes, uh, information will be more clear and uh, ethical in, uh, from the husband's mouth. And I think you make it very clear to my viewers. Okay, we now move to the last question of the program, and that is the issue of the mosh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, if you go to the National Assembly, you can have a look at it. It's hands up. Everything you see at the National Assembly is there for you to see. So I will direct you to go to the National Assembly and replay that and see what I said. So I will not go back to that. Once you say something at the Assembly, you walk. It's good. Yeah, and there, but there's always proof. So. Okay, no problem. So now we come to the end of the program, but I will allow you to say your final words before I close the segment of the program. Uh, my final word is to Ambanjo um, yourself. Yeah. They are my people. I am 100% by yourself. And um, the person you know, I've been tried and tested. Um, some of them would say they've seen MPs since PPP days, but no MP has done what I have done because I am the people's MP. I give my all, I give everything. 
And the legacy I want to leave is the legacy that should live forever, and that is the human legacy. Nurturing young people to step in, not to just fade away and die. Like I said, 2022 elections would be my last. I will go to parliament, I will start grooming my successor, and hopefully there will be another female. So all those fees that I'm paying, all those children that I work with, all those girls, should not go in vain. They should step into my shoes and be the Tumanjai. And that's what I want to say to Gambians and also to tell them that parliamentary work is very important in the development of a country. They've seen some of the contributions that we have made at the parliament. They've seen contributions we have made at regional level and they have seen what we can do in terms of women empowerment. Be rest assured, 2022 would be another journey where we would succeed in seeing our Women Empowerment Bill come into being. And 2027, we would have more female in Parliament guaranteed. Our wish was to have it passed before 2022 elections, but unfortunately, it did not happen. But we will work on it and make sure that women representation is a must in this country. Thank you, viewers. Thank you, Jeremy and Jim. Okay, viewers, we now come to the end of the program. And I think this was a very interactive uh, discussion. And I wanted to seize this opportunity to thank you for coming, honorable. And I am wishing you all the best in your next uh, parliamentary election. I guess to remind you, viewers, this is the personality show. Uh, sponsors are invited. You can contact us on 3463441. Do not forget to like, comment, and share. You can also subs uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Better Future Production. Uh, do, till then, it is a bye from me, Miss Hadidou. I will be back next week, Wednesday, the same time from 3 to 4.